Yeah. Okay, we are now going to do Piedmont. Anybody here been to Piedmont? Torino. Okay. Ah, uh, oh, you have ever been to Alba? No. Okay, okay. Uh, we're going to be in the province of Alba today for the three wines. Um, it's a little ways away from Torino. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful countryside. Um, been making wine for who knows how many years. Uh, we're going to try three wines tonight, a white and two reds. The white is agave. Um, have you, anyone here ne ever had agave? Okay, because it really is probably one of the first, if not the first, of the Italian white grapes that people got to know here. And they knew it as Gavi de Gavi. You mean white wines? Uh, I'm sorry, the white wines. Uh, Gavi de Gavi. And all that meant was that it's the wine called Gavi from the, the area of Gavi. Um, What's the grape? What is the grape in Gavi? Anybody know? Cortese. 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 Yeah. Says it right Says there. Says it right there. <laughs> See? See? Uh oh, somebody's cheating. See? Hey, I'm just real lucky. <laughs> yes. It's 100% Cortese. So, uh, what I do sometimes is ask anybody, anybody here ever had uh, Tempranillo? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And people will say, nah. Oh, so, yeah. Well, have you ever had Rioja? Rioja, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but. You know, it, it's just a matter of knowing. I mean, it's just some of the things you have to learn. Uh, the second wine we're going to try is a Dolcetto. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit because the name is kind of interesting based on, on the wine. Anybody here know Italian? And what's, what would Dolcetto mean? This is with very little sweet. Little sweet one. Little sweet yeah. one. Okay. Uh, keep that in the back of your mind when we taste it. Uh, and then the last one is a Barbera. Uh, which may be the, the it's probably half of, of all the plantings in, in Piedmont are Barbada. Uh, and it's the, the red wine of choice for many, many, many folks there. It, it can make absolutely outstanding wines. Uh, and it's a portion of the price of the better, of the better known Barbadesco and uh, Barolo. Now, of course, Barolo and Barbadesco are made with a grape that we're not going to try tonight, uh, and that grape is Nebbiolo. Now someday we'll uh, we'll we'll try those. Um, can you hand me those two glasses sure. too? Can you? Well, I'm going to have to make a little room somewhere. Well, they can. Yeah. We have two more people. Do you think we can squeeze over? Yeah, we can squeeze over. Thank you. Sure, that's no big deal. We have another table. Thanks a lot. That's no big deal. Sure, we can even have another table for you. Oh, okay. Come up here, we can even do that. Um, and while we're getting set up, before we taste the gavi, a little, just a little brief about Nebbiolo, which we are not going to taste tonight. Uh, where that name comes from of the grape is Nebbia, and Nebbia in Italian means fog. And if you're in Barolo country uh, during the harvest, in the mornings you wake up from if you're up on the hillsides and you look down into the valleys. All the vines are covered with fog. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely beautiful. Can you hand me the coffee? Um, yes, look. Can you hand me that? And then uh, the first time that we were there, uh, we were walking through the vineyards, and Kathy sees roses, roses planted at the at the head of every other row of of, uh, of vines. And she looked at me, and I said, "Hey, what do you want? We're Italian." You know, it's got, it's got, we got to have something in here that's, that's gorgeous. Uh, anybody know why those roses were planted? And it's not just for Barolo and Barbadesco, many, many vineyards all around the world. The rose bush is susceptible to the same diseases that the grapevines are, except that it happens earlier to the rose bushes. So they are the proverbial canary, canary, canary in the mine and, sure. yeah. and stuff. So they, um, they, you know, they, they look at them very, very carefully, and if they see a problem occurring, uh, they can stem it before it actually affects the uh, the vines. Okay. Um, well, we are going to try uh, Gabi tonight, and for those who've tried it before, I think you'll be very surprised with this one. Uh, I know I was when we uh, when we had it a couple of weeks ago. Um, the producer of this is Nicolello. Um, <laughs> 
And, and the Gavi vineyards, the Corteza vineyards are up on very, very steep hillsides, which allows them really good drainage and, and good access to the sun, uh, which allows them to ripen very, very gradually during the growing season uh, and become, um, you know, get all of the maturity out of the, out of the grapes that they, uh, that they can. All of the grapes, this one and the, and the last one, in fact, all three wines tonight, all the grapes are picked by hand, very, very gently pressed, uh, handled with very, very kid gloves. I don't know if you've noticed the thread through the wines that we've ever tasted in our classes here now that we've been doing for a couple of months. But every one of the wines that we've tasted has been very, very true to what the grape is supposed to be and what the wine is supposed to be. The quality is unmistakable in these wines. Um, and it's not because we're here that I'm saying that. They really and truly are absolutely uh, the highest of quality. Uh, so whoever here is, is picking, these, picking these wines out is doing just a really remarkable job of doing that. Um, um, let me just point out there were two more people who just arrived. Okay. So we're going to set them up. Okay. Um, I'll fill them in in the background on what you've said so far. About okay. Gavi. Okay. But we're going to need glasses. Okay. Yeah, let's get a sign outside. <laughs> let's get, it, let's get everybody in off the street. Uh, okay. Uh, Gavi. Grape is Cortese. Um, it's a hardy grape, um, and um, like I said before, Gavi is, is probably one of the first white wines, white Italian wines known here in the, in the U.S. Um, never used to like it, because I, cause the, the first ones that I tasted many, 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 many years ago were okay, but never really did anything to me. And then we tasted this a couple of weeks ago, and... Uh, uh, we'll see what it tastes like tonight. So again, as always, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process and we're going to look at the wine and holding it against the white background because what you really want to do, and the reason, the reason for doing that, and if you're at a dinner table, hold it against the white napkin. The reason you want to do that is because you want the light to come bouncing back off the white through the wine to see it. If you hold it up to the light, you're, you're not going to get that same clarity of the wine. And what you're looking for is you want to make sure it's not cloudy and murky. And as you can see from here, it's that nice lemony color and it's just brilliant. And that's what you're looking for. You want it to be, you want it to be nice and brilliant. Um, and in the case of white wines, unless it's a very heavily oak Chardonnay or it's an old, old white wine, it shouldn't be very golden. Uh, and which this one isn't. So it, at least it tells you that the wine's been handled properly, and it stands a, a good chance of, of, uh, of being a good wine. Next thing you want to do is smell. Now, what kind of aromas do you get on here? Or better yet, what aroma don't you get on here? We get so accustomed here when we drink our white wines, uh, especially Chardonnay, you don't get the oak. You don't get you don't get the vanilla. You don't get the butterscotch on here, which come from the oak. Um, so smelling this, uh, you'd probably tell yourself, well, at least we know that it's been it's been fermented and aged in stainless steel, and not in oak. Or if it has been in oak, the oak has been very old. Uh, and by old, by wine standards, it's three or four years old because after, after two or three years, it really imparts nothing to the wine in terms of flavor or color. Um, and what kind, of, what kind of aromas do you get? <clears throat> nothing very pronounced, right? Yeah, very okay, very now let's pretty. taste and see whether we can remember what we smelled. you want to notice in your mouth, is it dry or sweet? It's dry. Mm. Dry. Remember what we said before, that if there were any sugar left in the wine, you would taste it very quickly on entry into the mouth. Right. Uh, and we don't here. No. Nor do I get on it a very large burst of fruit, 
Right. Halfway, halfway 